Hey everybody. Today we're getting started with the ggplot command. This is an all-purpose workhorse function for creating beautiful graphical displays in R. It's part of the ggplot2 package, which is included in the tidyverse family of packages. So before we can make use of it, we have to load up the tidyverse family of packages with library parenthesis tidyverse. If you don't have tidyverse installed, you should first key in install.packages parenthesis quote tidyverse to make sure you have access to all those packages. There's lots of very useful functions in um, ggplot, tibble, tidyr, readr, and so on. Um, as your expertise in R grows, you're going to want to make use of many of them. So you may as well install them all right now. The philosophy behind the ggplot function is a little bit different than other plotting commands you may have used in the past. Um, the basic philosophy is that the most important thing in any graphical display from the perspective of some, the person making the display is which variables are being displayed on the x-axis, the y-axis, um, and whether variables are displayed in any other way, like with colors or shapes or the sizes of um, points, for instance. The exact sort of plot is really secondary. For instance, if we want to display a certain variable on the x-axis with counts on the y-axis, we're going to get very similar plots, philosophically speaking, with a histogram, a frequency polygon, a dot plot, and others. And so it makes sense to first specify the variable that goes on the x-axis, and only later really specify what sort of plot we want. At first, this seems a little bit backwards. For instance, if you've been working with plot in base R, but over time, this will very much seem like the most natural thing to do, really the only way to go. The other advantage to the ggplot command, as we'll see, is that it's layered. You can start with one graph and just add to it in a very natural and organic way. Okay, so let's get a, um, a scatter plot to start. We're going to work with the um, classical iris data set that I have opened up here in the viewer. It's got 150 observations of three different species of iris with um, five variables, including sepal length and sepal width. I want to get a scatter plot of sepal length versus sepal width to start. With ggplot, the first thing we need to do is to specify the data frame, excuse me, the data frame, in this case, iris. The ggplot command really is built to work with data frames. If you're just trying to plot a couple of vectors, the qplot function is probably easier. But in the real world, you're usually not just keying in a couple of, uh, of vectors by hand. That tends to only happen in, for example, introductory stats classes. Um, so after we've specified the data frame, as I suggested a moment ago, we next need to indicate which variables we want on the x and y axis, or if we want variables displayed with, for instance, color or shape or some other aesthetic. The syntax here is AES for aesthetic parentheses. Now we need to say which variable we want on the x-axis, in this case, sepal.width, and which variable we want on the y-axis, sepal.length. Need to spell it correctly. Notice I didn't put quotes around those variable names. That's, I think, universal in the entire tidyverse family of packages. If I just hit enter right now, I'm not going to get a very interesting graph. All that's really happened so far is the ggplot has set up some axes for me. I haven't actually specified how to display the data yet, and so nothing is being displayed. So let's use an up arrow and get this previous command back, and now let's actually overlay some data. As I said a moment ago, ggplot really is a layered grammar of graphics. We're going to take the layer that we already have and add one more on top of it, namely the actual points that we want displayed. The syntax here is geom underscore and then the um, name of the geometric object you want to use. There are a great many of them. You'll sort of uh, build up a vo vocabulary of these over time. We'll see a scatter plot now. It's geom underscore point. And we'll do one or two others later in this vid. Here, um, you need an open parenthesis and then a closed parenthesis. Later, if we like, we can add additional arguments inside of those parentheses to customize our graph. And that's actually going to give us the scatter plot that we're looking for. It's still kind of rough. Um, I'm not loving the, um, the fact that I have just the variable names on the x and y axes. I'm not loving the black and white. For instance, these are some things I immediately want to change. Let's deal with the black and white first of all. Inside geom point, I can specify color. 
And in this case, I don't know, let's go with red. Here I am putting red in quotes. It's not a variable name. It's referring to the actual color. So there we go. There are a great many colors um, available to you here, and I encourage you to explore that on your own. Now let's change those labels. Um, let's add a layer. So I take the previous command and just put plus. The layer I want to add is a labels layer, so labs. And on the x-axis, oops, inside of labs, I'm going to want to put sepal length, sorry, sepal width. Notice that I don't have any um, dot in between sepal and width. That's the only real difference here. On the y-axis, I want sepal length. And um, let's also get a main title, uh, title. I always mess that up. How about just irises? So you see I got an error, quote, iris is not found. That's because, as I said a minute ago, R is now looking for a variable when I don't have that in quotes. So let's go back and put it in quotes. There we go. Okay, so that's starting to look a bit more professional. Another thing that we might want to do here is to um, add color to this graph representing the different species of the different irises. In other words, we want one color for setosas, one for versicolors, and one for virginicas. This is going to be an aesthetic, a way of um, displaying one of the variables. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to take out the color command from the geome point because I don't just want one color. And instead, I'm going to put color inside this aesthetic command because I want a variable to be mapped to color. In this case, species. There we go. Let's zoom in on that to take a better look at it. Fantastic. We can now see the Setosas, Versicolors, and Virginicas each have a, their own color. We can now get a different, uh, a bit of a feel for the differences in these flowers. There are other ways that we could have displayed this categorical variable. Um, there are several other aesthetics available to us. I just want to point out one more right now, and that is shape. Now, instead of displaying the different types of irises with different colors, they're going to be displayed with different shapes. Zoom in on that one. So we see we've got little circles, little triangles, and little rectangles for each of the different sorts of flowers. Now, this is drawing my eye to a potential problem, namely that um, there may be some overlap in these points. For instance, right here, just at about 3.6 comma maybe 6.3, I have both a, it looks like Ver Versicolor and Virginica right at that point. Um, that may be potentially happening a lot in this display. So there might be situations where you want to do something about that. There's actually a geome built for this. And this gives us an opportunity to see a second sort of geome, a different sort of way of displaying the same data um, with sepal width on the x-axis and sepal length on the y-axis. So I'm just going back to geome point and I'm going to replace it with geome jitter, which is now going to perturb each of these values by a small random amount. The graph is going to look very, very similar, but now we won't quite have exactly the same overlap. This is particularly useful when you have a larger data set where the values tend to be rounded off to, um, fairly bluntly. Fantastic. Um, there's a lot more that we can do here. I just want to point out a couple of other things. For the moment, let's get rid of this shape command. We may come back to that later. Great. So now we're just back to our basic scatter plot. And instead of jitter, let's just stick with geom point for the, for the moment. Okay. Um, a frequent thing that we might want to do with a scatter plot is to add a regression line or other smoother. So let's do that. Even though, as we look at this um, overall scatter plot, it's probably not the best candidate for a, um, a linear model, let's go ahead and do it formally anyway right now. Again, ggplot is a layered grammar of graphics, so we can just take our previous plot and then add a smoother. The syntax here is geom underscore smooth. If we do that, we're going to get what's called a low S curve. So that's sort of a um, rolling polynomial interpolant here, a rolling polynomial regression. 
Um, if we want a linear model, we need LM equals quote, I'm sorry, we need method equals quote LM. There we go. We can get rid of that standard error ribbon if we like with SE equals false. There we go. Now, I am, I already hinted that, or I already said that this scatter plot doesn't really have the sort of linear relationship that we would really like to see when we're doing a, um, a regression line. However, if we just look at the individual species, that's not so much the case. Suddenly we do have a good situation, a situation where we have good candidates for linear regression. So let's go back here and re-add in this color aesthetic color equals species and just see what happens now let me zoom in, on, zoom in on this we've said that we wanted to group the data by species um, we got different colors for each of the three species when ggplot then got to the geome smooth it maintained that grouping and gave us a regression line for each of the three different species here we can see very directly a fairly linear relationship between sepal width and sepal length for the Setosa flower. It's somewhat less obvious for the Virginica and Versicolor, but it's present nonetheless. So that's potentially useful. One other thing that's um, worth seeing right now. What if we want to have a different graph for each of the different species? There are many ways to do that. The one I really want to point out right now is facet underscore wrap. And the syntax here is a tilde saying wrap according to the following variable. And in this case, I want species. And we'll zoom in on that. Okay, so now we can see these three scatter plots with regression lines side by side. Notice that in each case, the scale on the x-axis and the scale on the y-axis has been, been maintained. The intention here is that this is going to make the differences between the categories more clear. Okay, so um, that's a quick introduction to ggplot with scatter plots. Let's take just a moment and look at a few other sorts of displays of data that we could do. Um, Let's see here. Let's go with a single variable display now. So let's do another ggplot command. We'll stick with iris. And let's just look at sepal length. So x equals sepal dot length. This time, let's get a histogram. So it's geome underscore histogram, just as you would expect. And again, you need the open parenthesis and the close parenthesis. There's a very rough and ready histogram. We can change the labels just as we did before with the labs command. We can, for example, add color. Let's go ahead and do red again. Notice that it did a boundary color. If we actually want to do the inside of the bars, we need fill. I'm not a graphic designer, so I don't think this will come out as beautiful as you might like. Let's do uh, a fill of pink. There we go. Um, we can also change the number of bins, just as R is suggesting here. Default is bins equal 30. Let's say that we only want 20. There we go. Um, as with the, um, the scatter plot geome, we can also do color aesthetics here as well. So let's see here. Let's get rid of the color and fill here. We'll leave the bins. And now let's add an aesthetic for, um, I think fill will probably look nicer. So let's let fill be species. Now we're seeing the same histogram as we would if the fill command were left out, but now it's colored in. Wherever we have setosas, those are drawn in pink. Wherever we have versicolors, they're drawn in green. And wherever we have virginicas, they're drawn in blue. Um, if we like, we can wrap this as well with facets. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, let's again do it by species. And so now we get three histograms, one for each of those three different species. 
Again, the X and Y axes are kept the same, so we um, hopefully get a, a clear picture of the differences between these flowers. I advertised earlier that um, there wasn't going to be a huge difference between single variable displays with the same variable on the x-axis. Um, let's see that in practice now. Let's just simplify this by getting rid of the facet wrap and the species. And maybe I'll just add in a boundary color of black just to make the bars more distinct from one another. Um, actually, I probably don't want that, but that's okay. Let's just change the hist let's just change the geome from histogram to, for example, freak poly. No Q in there. So freak poly is going to give me a frequency polygon. There we go. In this case, the um, the color equals black command isn't really doing anything because we don't have any inside on this. Um, let's see here. Actually, it's changed. It is keeping the color black, but it won't. Um, it's the fill command that wouldn't really do anything here. Uh, let's see here. There's many others that we could do here. We could do a dot plot, for instance. That will probably not be the most beautiful here, but it's possible. Um, many other commands. You can easily um, find the list of available geomes with um, by Googling R ggplot geomes. In particular, R Studio has out a good ggplot cheat sheet that has um, a good sort of uh, sort of cookbook style um, list of all your different geomes. One thing that I'll point out here that's sometimes useful on these single variable displays. Let's go back to the histogram. Um, for instance, we may know the, um, we may want to label the, say, median value here with a vertical line. So let's add in one of those. Here we're adding in another geome, literally layering on another geome, geome <laughs> underscore V line in this case. And we're going to want to have specify an X intercept, X intercept. And the value that we're going to want to use for our x-intercept in this case is going to be the median of iris dollar sepal length. There it is. So now we have a vertical line for the median. Um, that's only one of many other um, geomes that you can add. There's um, perhaps not surprisingly an h-line command, an h-line geome. There's also um, a more generic line drawing function, abline, A-B-L-I-N-E. Um, you can also plot more general functions with stat underscore function. I'll do another video on that particular functionality at a later time. Let's see here. The, um, there are many, many other ways that we can customize these graphs. This really is a, a deep area for exploration. I'll be doing many, many other videos on the geome function. Um, in vids to come. In particular, we can do a lot to customize the color scheme that's being used here. We can change the overall theme of our display here. Um, and we can do a lot of, we can incorporate a lot of different um, statistics and summary values into these plots. So stay tuned and I'll get to all of that in good time.